If you were to ask me what the weirdest galaxy is, I'd without a doubt say hoax object. Hello and welcome back to the channel. It has been ages since I posted my last video, mostly due to a really distressing house situation, moving halfway across the country and also some horrendous examinations. Um, I've also not been able to miss a Martian sock yet, so today instead we'll be discussing a really cool galaxy called Hoag's Object. Hoag's Object was discovered by Arthur Hoag in 1950, and at the time our knowledge of astronomy couldn't really help us decipher what Hoag's Object actually was. You won't be surprised to know that our amazing advancement in science and technology within the past 70 years hasn't actually brought us that much closer to understanding Hoag's Object but we know for sure that it's an irregular ring type galaxy and there are other galaxies that are quite similar to Hoag's object but not to the extent of weirdness that Hoag's object actually is. Its visible baryonic matter makes it roughly half the size of the Andromeda galaxy, however it only has 8 billion stars making it um, have less than 1% of the stars that Andromeda has. I mean, if I put two pictures up, one of Andromeda and one of Hoag's object, you can quite clearly see that there's fewer stars than Andromeda anyway. But I think you can also quite easily tell that Hoag's object is quite clearly not your average galaxy. I should note that I called it a ring galaxy earlier, and that is true. However, one thing to note about ring galaxies is that they don't typically form naturally, or so that we think. Usually they come about due to something like a collision or something else that we don't quite understand yet. So for that reason, we sometimes call Hoag's object a galaxy or just a plain object, but in reality, it still is a galaxy and you can use these words interchangeably. In the center of this galaxy, you can see that there's a yellow nucleus and this um, we expect to have the usual things a galaxy nucleus will have. So a supermassive black hole, lots of hot, dense gas and some very old yellow stars. In the outer ring, you can see there's quite a lot of blue and this is typically from very young, very hot, very massive, bright blue stars. These characteristics are what you'd see in a typical galaxy, um, but what's quite distinct about Hoag's object is that right outside the nucleus there appears to be absolutely nothing. We think there may be a couple star clusters, but in reality it's pretty much empty, in fact you can even see galaxies right behind Hoag's object. On top of that, on the outskirts of the galaxy... I just realised you can probably hear my birds. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> on top of that, on the outskirts of the galaxy, something that we can't see um, with our own eyes is a ring of hydrogen gas, and we were able to find this out using data from the Westerbork Radio Synthesis Telescope. Oh, and one cool thing to note is that because um, the inner ring of the galaxy is so sparse and translucent in a way, um, if you look at the top of the ring, you can actually see another ring galaxy right behind Hoag's object, which is so mind-boggling because ring galaxies themselves are so rare, and yet we were able to find two just by looking in the same direction. Isn't that just amazing? So now we come to the really big question, and that is how Hoag's object came to be. Ring galaxies in general are not very well known, they're immensely rare, and so actually studying them is quite difficult to do, and the amount of data we have on them is rather limited. But what we know is that they were likely caused by a collision of some sort with two galaxies. So in this case we would have something like a, a gorgeous spiral galaxy that just gets pierced by another galaxy, usually we call a bullet. And what this does is it destabilises this spiral galaxy and causes an outward rippling effect which generally moves the um, the outer stars in the spiral to form just a ring on the outskirts of the galaxy. Unfortunately to this day we've never actually been able to view a collision that is um, creating a ring galaxy of some sort, so we have no way of confirming this theory with just observational evidence unfortunately. There is also a sort of aftermath theory which some astronomers also um, do believe in, uh, where essentially after a really long period of time these rings um, slowly become more diffuse and spread out, um, extremely slowly of course, and this would create a very dim galaxy which we know as a low surface brightness galaxy, um, one of which is actually Malin 1 which is probably one of the largest galaxies we know of, um, although we can definitely see for sure that it is a spiral galaxy, so it's, it's not a ring galaxy that's turned into a low surface brightness galaxy, but there is a theory out there. Any evidence for this theory is mostly based on computer simulation though and not actual observational evidence. A ring galaxy that we're actually really 
really confident in saying was caused by a collision is in fact our dearly beloved Cartwheel Galaxy. Everyone a round of applause! Look she's even brought an entourage! The Cartwheel Galaxy we think for sure was involved in a heads-on collision which caused a shockwave through the galaxy and separated though not completely, the galaxy into a centre and not just one but two rings in fact. It is believed that the companion galaxy G3 was the bullet that actually caused the shock within the cartwheel galaxy as it's connected to the galaxy through the hydrogen tail. Um, we won't know this for certain unless we go back in time but it is quite um, well believed. So how does this connect to Hoag's object? Was it created through a bullseye collision? To put it simply, we don't know. One problem is that there is absolutely nothing within Hoag's object's vicinity that could have acted as a bullet that we know of so far, not even a remnant nor a fragment of a galaxy. This could either mean that a collision never happened, or that a collision did happen, but it was at such a long, long, long time ago that any evidence of another galaxy has been completely just eviscerated. And we know from radio data um, from Hoag's object that any collision would have had to have happened at least a billion years ago. So we know that the time scale of this collision must have been at least billions of billions of years ago. That being said, Hoag's object does have some peculiaralities. One of which is that the nucleus of the galaxy rotates unreasonably slower than the outer ring. Could this be from the fact that, yes, two galaxies did collide at some point in time, billions upon billions of years ago, but that somehow some Franken galaxy was created from them? The truth is we'll never likely know what happened to Hoag's object until we find more Hoag-like galaxies and study them. Or you could just believe the guy who said it was engineered by aliens. And that's where I'm going to leave you today. Goodbye!